evening, Tabernacle Youth. Um, we find ourselves quite in a tight space, I think, in a predic predicament. And we are all in an uncomfortable situation where we are wondering what is next. And we are asking ourselves a lot of questions. And I thought this would be an opportune time for us to really look, go back and look at our theme, the encounter. And, and look at how can we encounter Christ in the season that we are in or in the time that we find ourselves in when church doors are closed and we can no longer come to church. How are we going to encounter Christ? How are we going to encounter, you know, have moments of encounter with God? And it's really for us to really think about it and think about it maybe probably outside areas that we are comfortable with and go back to God and really say, God, teach us, lead us in this time and go with us. So we're, that's basically what we're going to talk about. I'm going to share with you briefly on how this looks like for us and how we can do it. How can we have an encounter with God when we are confined at home and we are not meeting or we are not having fellowship with other brethren? Father, I just want to thank you. I glorify your name. King of kings, you are holy. You are beautiful. We pray, O oh Lord, for your word that is about to be shared. We pray, O oh Lord, for just your direction and for your leadership and your guidance. We give you this moment to go with us in this journey, O oh Lord. And we really want to you know, have postures of, hum of humility before you, where we don't go before you, but we learn to take a step back and really follow after you, O oh Lord and allow you to lead us in places of encounter, in mom, into moments of encounter with you, where we let go a lot of things as we have imagined them, O oh Lord, and we lay down our fears and our anxieties, and we really come before you as your children, as people, O oh Lord, that are called by you, that are called to shine your light into the world. We pray all this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. So how does an encounter look like when you are pressed in from every side and when you are you know, pushed in from every side? What comes out of you when you are pressed in, you know, when, when all these situations are happening around you, what, it, what is it that is springing out of you? Is it the Christ that is in you? The one who is the hope of glory to the world? The one who the world is crying out for to encounter and to get to know? Is that what is coming out of you? Or is it the fear and anxiety that we read about and we watch every day in the news? As a child of God, what stance am I supposed to be taking? And what position am I supposed to be at? Is my light shining or is my light hidden under a table somewhere? As I'm confined to my home, is my light still shining to the world? And that's basically the questions that we need to be asking ourselves in this time. We need to be taking stock of ourselves in this time and really seeing, is Christ working through me or am I being a hindrance to him as he's bringing hope to the world? Is he able to use me to reach to my neighbor, to reach to my own family? Or, is, or are they watching me and saying, if, if, it, if it, that's what it looks like to have Christ, if that's what it looks like to have, to have Jesus, then I don't want any of that. Am I being the light to the world? Have my encounter moments brought that forth? And what is, really, was it, what is it that's really coming out of me? At the beginning of this year, when, when we came up with the theme, the encounter, 
I really felt God was calling us to a place where we really had to go deeper with him, where we had to you know, abandon all and just seek moments with him and seek encounters with him and go deeper than we have ever gone with him. Let go of everything that we know and go deeper with him. And it's funny how circumstances have turned out that now church is no longer the way we imagined it. And we're having to really let go of things or let go of our patterns, let go of things that we have built up in over our lives. And how does an encounter with him look like in this time? How am I still going to allow him to encounter me such that my neighbor is able to see the Christ that is in me? Those are questions that really need to be your everyday concern. How is Christ shining forth in this time? How am I encountering Christ? When the world looks at me, that's, that's the basic encounter of Christ. So if I can't display Christ to the world, then the world is stuffed of the hope that it so desperately needs. Let's learn to go back to the basics. To go back to moments of really just letting go of everything and coming humbly before him and saying, Lord, teach me anew your ways. Teach me anew, O oh Lord, the things that you have made it. Such that I let go of what I know. I let go of what I have made it about. Teach me, O oh Lord, your heart for the world. Teach me your heart for this lost world. Show me your plan for the world in this time. When the world is sharing what is going on and fear is rising up and anxieties mount in us, may I keep my eyes focused on you so that I may be able to be the hope that the world needs. An encounter with him also means that we learn to rest in him. And in this time where we, are, we have so much time in our hands, it might look like we are resting, but is it really rest? If it is not rooted in Christ, if, it, if, it, if it's just too much time in my hands, is it really rest? Rest really means that I have to put Christ first. I have to let him be the one who leads me and let him be the one who guides me. My strength has to come from him. My, my energy has to come from him. My passions have to come from him. He has to be the basis for everything that, is, that I do. And if he is not the basis of everything, then I am not at rest. I'm just striving and working for nothing. So let Christ be the, you know, where you stand, be the foundation or the rock upon which you stand. Let him be the one who gives you rest in this time. Let his strength work through you. Let his, his love work through you. Let, let his passions work through you such that you may be able to do and be the light. And as you rest in him and you take stock of your life and you let his, his, his power work through you, you find all that you are encountering him in ways that you have never imagined. You find that you know, he leads you in ways that you have never imagined before. In Psalms 31, verses 19 to 22, it says, How great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you. You lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the watching world. How great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you. You lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the watching world. If we learn to run to God first, if we learn to let him be the one who leads us and directs our paths and directs our days, the world will watch and see the goodness of God. 
And that's, that, that's what's desperately needed in this time for us as Christians to let go of our religion, to let go of things that we you know we have, we have made church to be about and to go back to really the feet of Jesus and allow him to be the one who shines forth in this moment. You know, not our teaching abilities, not you know, how, how, what we can do, but let really, really let Christ be the one who shines forth in us. For when we run to him and we let him be our strength, we let him be our power, we let him be our passions, then we are able to do more than we ever imagined because he works through us, he works in us. So the challenge in this time is to really let go and let his strength be the one that shines forth in us and let his power be at work in us such that the world will be able to see his goodness. The world will be able to, to see the light that is in us. The world may be able to reach for the hope that is in us. So let's have encounters with him. Let's have moments where we run to his feet, where we really seek him and we let go of whatever plans we have put forth for, the, for, the, for, the, for the, this time of confinement. And really go back to his feet and say, Lord, be the one who directs my days. That you own my days, you own my life. So speak, Master, and I will do as you say. If we, go, if we can really have that posture, then God will be able to fulfill his plan for this time, for this season, because he always has a plan. He's always in control. And if we learn to seek his plan and seek him first, then his plans will not be frustrated by our inactivity or our insensitivity to him. So let's run to him. Let's seek him first. Let that be the first things you will do in the morning when we wake up. Instead of reaching for our phones or turning on the news or not even speaking to the next person in the house with you. Learn to have moments with him where he, he sets the tone for you, where he leads you and he directs you. And he tells you what your day is supposed to look like. When was the last time as a church we really allowed God to be the one who sets the tone? Not our programs. Our programs have stopped at this moment. But God is still God and he's still on the throne. So may we come before him and really seek him first. Give him our first in everything. Give him our strength. Give him our all. Give him our first moments when we, wait, when we open our eyes. And let him be the one who directs us and, and leads us in ways that we should go. And even as our days continue, that we keep our minds on him. We keep our thoughts focused on him. The Bible says that he will keep us in perfect peace when we do that. That, it, that anxieties won't rise up because our focus is on God. We are keeping our eyes on God. Just like Peter in the story, in, 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 you know, when he got off the boat. And he, when he, as long as he kept his gaze on Christ, he didn't sink. But as soon as he looked at the trouble that was around him, then he began to sink. So let's keep our eyes on Christ. Throughout our days, throughout our time, keep our eyes focused on Christ. And this is also an opportunity for us to really just dig deep into the word. More than just our five-minute readings, more than just our surface glancing of his word, but to really dive deep into his word and pray the Holy Spirit be the one who leads us and who guides us. Pray the Holy Spirit is the one who, know, who teaches us the word. When things have been taken from you, the people that you listen to, 
or the people that you follow after. This, this has been taken away from us in this season. We can no longer rely solely on our pastors to be the ones who give us the word. This is the season and the time where God is leading us into his word to run to his word ourselves and know what he has to say ourselves. So use the time wisely. Dig deep into his word. Do not waste the time that you have been given. Do not waste the hours that you have been given. The TV shows will always be there. Or whatever it is that you find yourself busy with will always be there. But rather spend your time in the presence of God in his word. Allow him to be the one who recalibrates you in this season. Who sets you anew. And, and, and builds the tone for what you are going to do. And come out of this time of confinement as a new person as a new creation before the Lord having grown more than just growing a new skill or learning a new skill but have grow in your relationship with God grow in your encounters with God if your prayer life was you know very shallow or dry going into this season come out of it having grown having really seen the Lord having had experiences with the Lord yourself. Do not just take other people's word for it. Seek the Lord for yourself while he may be found. And we are able to do all this when we ask the Holy Spirit to be the one who teaches us, who leads us, and who guides us. We have not been left to our own devices, but we've been given the Holy Spirit who is a great teacher to really lead us to go with us, to go before us. And all we have to do is follow him and let him be the one who teaches us. Let him be the one who is our strength. Let him be the one who is our peace in this moment. And as we do that, as we follow step after step, step after step, we realize that we have had encounters with God. And this is personally a journey that God has been leading me through this year. Um, at the beginning of the year, one simple thing that he asked me to do was to let to, to, for him to be the one that I run to first thing in the morning. It was already a habit I had begun building in my life. But one thing that I was doing in that was I was waking up first thing in the morning, going, going to grab a cup of coffee so that I can wake up and then spending time in prayer or reading the word. A cup of coffee on one hand and my Bible on the other. But God began to really just ask me to let go of the coffee, to lay it down and go before him. And it was... You no know, strange waking up half a, half 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 away half a let, but in those moments when I began to give him every day, give him those moments, those half a let moments, he became he began to be what coffee was for me, the one who keeps me awake, the one who makes me alert, the one who gives me energy in the morning. And as I began to do that, I, I realized that I had a new encounter with him. I had tasted, I learned to taste him first before I tasted anything else in my day. And that set the tone that allowed me to be at rest throughout the day where I wasn't striving, where I didn't need to grab for many cups of coffee to just to go about my day. But I needed to just have one minute with him throughout, throughout you know, little moments of, with him throughout the day. And I will be re-energized and, and I will have the wisdom I needed for the situations that I was encountering. And the funny thing is my days kept getting even more hectic. But the Holy Spirit was more than enough for all of those moments. So in this season, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Allow him to whisper just one thing to you that you need to let go of. And let him be the one who has your time, who has the monopoly of your time. And come out of these days stronger than you went in, closer to him than you went in. I'll pray for us. 
Holy Spirit, I pray for your leadership and your guidance. I pray that we will really come before you in humility, letting go of everything that we have made it about. And making it about you. <coughs> and making it about you. And who you are. Lead us in your ways everlasting. Lead us to your truth. Lead us to your feet. Lead us to your word. Teach us to let go of the things that we have held on to for so long. That even in this time as you have created space in our lives, let us not see it as a time of trouble, but let us see it as a time of, of an encounter with you, where we've been given a rare moment to be at your feet. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will use this time wisely, that Holy Spirit, you would lead us, you would guide us in this time. We surrender ourselves to you and to your leadership. In Christ Jesus' name I pray, amen. Pray that you have a blessed time at his feet, leaning on him and relying on him. Amen.